Oi! Tudo bem? Sejam muito bem-vindos à Cultura de Excelência. Eu sou a Karen Ross e um prazer receber vocês aqui. Aqui na Voito teremos encontros semanais onde vamos conversar com mulheres de todo o mundo sobre propósito, melhoria de processo e gentileza. Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Karen Ross and it's a pleasure to welcome you here. Here at Voitu, we'll be having weekly meetings where we'll talk with women from all around the world about purpose, process improvement, and kindness. And I'm so excited. This is our very first episode of Cultura de Excelencia. And what better way to start any journey lean journey, any journey that you're going to go on, the best way to start is with purpose. So today, um, we're going to start out, first of all, by saying that for our 15 episodes of this web series, you'll see a QR code on the screen, and you can just scan that QR code, and you'll be able to get a whole handbook with information about each episode, about our guests. It's gonna be perfect for you with summaries of the different episodes. So please make sure to download that uh, handbook. It will be great for the whole rest of the series. And now to start our first episode of this season of Cultura de Excelencia, I would like to welcome as our very first guest, Katie Anderson, who is the uh, founder of KBJ Anderson Consulting, and she's the author of the fabulous book, All About Purpose, Learning to Lead and Leading to Learn. No better way to start off this series than to talk about purpose with Katie Anderson. Hi, Katie. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Karen. It's so great to be with you here today and everyone as well. Thank you. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and about what you're doing and why you're so passionate about purpose? Yes, great. Well, I it's always interesting to introduce myself to you, Karen, because we know each other so well. Um, but for those of you who don't know me, I'm Katie Anderson. I'm a leadership and learning coach based in California, but I work with organizations and around the world, helping them lead with intention, connecting purpose, process, and um, people together to achieve what they want in their organizations and for themselves. And I came from a healthcare background, which is where I learned about lean principles and continuous improvement and moved into the leadership and consulting space. And I also had the incredible fortune to live in Japan in 2015 and 16 and met Mr. Isao Yoshino, who was a 40 year Toyota leader. And out of that experience came the book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn. So I'm excited to be here today and talk with you about purpose and the word intention, which is what I'm so pa passionate about. It's about how do we understand our purpose, what's most important inside of our hearts and then how do we align our actions and our behaviors to fulfill that purpose? So first understanding what our purpose is, is where we need to get started. So I'm excited to be here today to talk with you. Absolutely. All right. So let's get started. And I, I really you know, can't tell the, the people who are watching this web series how many hours that Katie and I have probably spent talking about purpose. So Katie, since creating a culture of excellence, starts with purpose. What is the very first thing an organization can do to get started with purpose? And of course, some organizations, many have been in business for a long time. What can they do to make sure that everybody, because we often have new people, that everybody understands what that purpose is? Those are the, it's a huge question. We could talk about, we could talk about this for the whole episode. And um, I'd love your input too, Karen. Uh, there, are, there are many things an organization can do to, or individuals too to connect with purpose that I think 
one of the biggest mistakes that I see organizations do is they're focused on the thing that we do or the thing that we create rather than the original purpose. So what we deliver, the service we deliver or the product that we create is actually in service of something else. And so we need to go back to that of what is the reason for our existence? What is the problem we're trying to solve in an organization? What value are we trying to create? Because there are many ways that we can do that for the service or the products that we offer. So it's going back and saying, well, what is that original intention or purpose for what we do? And so that can be hard. And one of the things that I've actually um, incorporated more into my practice that I've learned from you, Karen, is having individuals draw that purpose and connect with it outside of not just using words, but how, um, when we can draw, we can really see so much more. So we can dive into that later as well. And then for organizations that have been in uh, business for a long time, it's also going back to say, for all the things we do, what is the uniting purpose behind that? What is the impact, the value that we're really trying to have in the world? And then, then communicate that to everyone and also show the connection that people have in the work that they do for creating or fulfilling that purpose of the organization as well. I love that, Katie. And, you know, it's so easy to just get caught up in the everyday things that we're doing, the actions that we're taking and forget what uh, the reason that we're undertaking it for. And so many organizations, when I work with them also, and I ask them, well, what's your mission or what's your vision? And even the head of the organization will say, hey, can I just look on the internet? And that's always a sign to me that somehow we've lost track of what that bigger purpose is, yes. why, why we're here, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think there's some great examples. I mean, I always go back to the auto leave, which is a, a um, seatbelt manufacturer, and they don't just say, oh, we make seatbelts. They save lives. And the way they do that is to create a high quality seatbelt for people. And so that's really inspirational, opposed to the widget we are the thing we create. Um, so what we're getting back to the heart and the inspiration and what's really important. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that really connects us with the next question, which is about customers, right? So how can we make sure that our business purpose and the wants and needs of our customers go together, especially in these rapidly changing times. Oftentimes we go to work, even if we're now, you know, remote and we're on uh, some kind of Zoom or other kind of web chat platform. It's so easy to focus internally because we see the people we work with and we don't always see our customers. How do we make sure that the focus is just as much on our customers and help people understand that our purpose has to do with that connection with our customers? Uh, so that's uh, a great question. question. It's about also making sure that we keep going back to that purpose that we had really focused on in that first question and putting our heads up and making sure that how are we getting input from our customers? What value do they, what do they need now? Maybe what we were doing in the past is not actually what they need now. And, and, and then what do we do? to pivot and, and change, to stay connected with our purpose and creating that value and still fulfilling the needs uh, that our customers have now. Of course, it's important to also pay attention to what does the organization need and the people doing the work as well. But again, an organization is in business to serve our customers. And so we have to stay connected to that purpose and what is going to create value and what is needed for our customers as well. And the, one of the best ways of doing that is, you know, to go see, to go listen, to hear, and stay connected about what's happening and what's needed by actually talking to them. Especially in changing times like, like this, that how are we going to know what our customers want unless we go and speak to them? And then how do we make sure that the way we're acting and the things that we're doing are helping. It's the how, the fulfilling our purpose through helping them through their changing wants and needs. Yes, absolutely. So what should companies do to transform their purpose into tangible actions, right? So now maybe we have like 
auto leave save lives for Toyota become the global mobility company, right? We have this great purpose, but what do we do to make sure those changes actually um, have tangible actions and that they're enacted with kindness, both for team members and for customers? So, so much that I could say on this. And I think, uh, first and foremost, this really gets back to that word intention that I talked about earlier. So it's not just about how do we have this idea and the concept, but how do we fulfill a purpose? And so that's about taking action. And that's at the individual level, as well as the organizational level. So how do we have purpose? And then how do we have the actions that align in the direction of that? What I didn't explain is in Japanese, the, the symbols that create the word intention come from heart or purpose and direction or the compass. And so those two must be united. We need to take action to fulfill the purpose. So it's about getting back to people as well. So people are how we fulfill the purpose and the actions that we take. And so it's making sure that we stay connected to what's going on for our customers and what's happening for the people that work in the organization um, as well. And so, and that's where the concept of kindness comes in. How do we, how do we get connected to that concept of respect for humanity and uh, people doing the work? And of course we need processes that help us do that. And so people know, you know, what, what is the target? What do we need to be achieving? What are the processes that people can follow? How are they engaged in problem solving and contributing to the work being better? And I really think that that is how we connect and create action on fulfilling the purpose. It's really with a focus on people and on learning and then continuous improvement. And through the empowerment of engaging everyone in connection to purpose and fulfilling that purpose each and every day. I absolutely uh, agree with you. And I think so many people, and, and we see this, especially I think now, you know, in the pandemic, so many people feel disconnected and disengaged at work. They're going and they're doing things, but I don't think that people only want to go to work to receive a paycheck. They want to feel like they're connected to that organization's mm -hmm. purpose, that they're doing something more that than they could do on their own, that they're actually helping save lives, right? Uh, absolutely. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I was thinking as you were talking about a company that I take people to when I lead trips to Japan to learn about all of this, that there is a, there's a supplier that does, you know, metal, that does sheet metal. And a way to help them stay connected with the customer is they have some of the final parts hanging on the wall so that people can see and then where it fits into the actual car so that people can see, oh, these things that I'm doing, which is just sheet metal, three or four more steps down the line, this is how it fits into the final product and, and something that they could see themselves using as well and that real connection to the purpose too. So we need to all, I think something that's really important about us as humans is we we all have an innate desire to feel connected to something bigger than ourselves. And so, um, just doing a task, the clocking in, clocking out can end up being disengaging. Yes, we may need paychecks, but we want to have, feel more fulfilled. And that's where the concept of purpose comes in. I absolutely agree with you. So this next question actually ties into that. What are some best practices for organizations to use to actually attract people who are going to fit in with their purpose. I guess it's build in quality at the source. Yeah. We're hiring people, right? Who really want to be there and connect deeply with that organization's purpose. Yeah, this all connects to two of the topics that we've already covered, which is purpose and people. So it goes like, first, do we even have some clarity of what the organizational purpose is? And then how are we connecting that to people? And I really see that as um, leadership's responsibility and role too, of having clarity of that purpose and how then that connection is made in to each individual pe person working in the organization and how are they supporting those people? I always say, and I, I talk about this in the book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn, that a leader's role is to set the direction that includes defining the purpose, the challenges and the targets that need to be fulfilled, providing support to their people, so how and helping them engage and also developing themselves. And so to do that more effectively, 
So the way we engage and attract people to the organizational purpose is one, knowing what that purpose is, and then two, creating those human connections about how we're fulfilling the purpose. And so it's not about leaders just sitting in their office and doing heads down, but engaging in that connection from a, from a human perspective as well. Um, and, and for leaders to be fulfilling in, uh, that purpose and leading by example as well. So we create an organizational culture is created not through you know, changing the culture, but it's about each individual living and breathing that that purpose as well. And that ends up being uh, the culture that exists. I really think back to also really, while you were talking, it made me think about intention, that we really need to be intentional because so many times if you go online and you look at a job description for a company, it's just basically a list of tasks mm. that or things, you know, general kind of things like be good at Excel or be good at computer, computer programming. But it doesn't really tell you anything about the purpose of the organization. It doesn't really tell you anything about the how. And when you even go for the interview, they don't ask you about how you would go about something to see if it would be a good fit. They just want to know the outcomes, right? Focused mm -hmm. on the ends instead of focused on the means. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and again, focusing on the tasks rather than the purpose or the outcome or what the value is that we're trying to create and how that role then fits into the context of that value creation. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If leaders don't keep bringing that purpose to the forefront, then it's easy for it to get lost and forgotten, I think. Yes. So now we're going to change. Uh, and uh, I have a few more questions. And I really... These are wonderful questions because they come from Boito students. And the questions were selected, and we love to answer student questions. So um, here we go. First question, what tips would you give to managers? Now we're down on the managerial level who want to change the organizational culture mm. and to better align with the purpose. That level sometimes is just so squashed in the yeah. middle. Totally. You know, the example I'm going to share comes from uh, from Toyota and it's covered in the book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn, because I think it is so powerful and an example about changing culture. Um, and I like to always, well, I'm paraphrasing a quote from Mr. Yoshino that we don't change culture, we help people see a different way of being. And so managers, and especially like frontline and middle managers, have a really important role because they're so connected to all the people doing the work. And so again, it's leading by example and you can influence up. Um, again, you know, if the purpose isn't aligned with what you're trying to achieve, then that's a, that's a different challenge. But uh, for the, so the example was the, the NUMI facility in uh, the United States in the early 1980s. And this was a joint venture between General Motors car manufacturer, an American car manufacturer, and their worst performing plant that had terrible quality and engagement. And then a, a Toyota, which was at the time thriving and wanting to expand. And Toyota was taking the original frontline managers, the team leaders and group leaders, and teaching them a new way of being. And Mr. Yoshino, the subject of my book, was in charge of that training program to help these managers see a different way of connecting to a new purpose of the organization. And you know, we talk about, it's about giving experiences. So it's not just training, it's about each and every day showing up to help support people, to improve their work, to stay connected to the purpose. And it's through that engagement and seeing that it's not necessarily punitive if you make a mistake, that actually someone's there to help you. This is the concept of pulling the and on cord when there was a uh, problem on the line. So it was shifting the culture from uh, a problems or you know defects getting to the customer versus at the moment, coming and fixing that. And so changing that whole mindset was about also 
a different way for those frontline managers to show up. And it required them to see a greater connection to a different type of purpose and then living that each and every day, showing up to help support their people, to not blame when there were mistakes, to help solve problems. And it was through that that a culture shifted in just a year. And so I think there's lessons to be learned for middle managers or frontline managers here too, that assuming that there is a connection to a purpose that, you know, that they're actually trying to create. So that has to come from, uh, from the top. It's about living and breathing that every day and creating engagement, problem solving and helping when there are problems uh, and giving space for learning as well. And I think through that is how we create um, an organization's engaged and then ultimately aligned with the organization's uh, purpose as well. I love that. And it ties so directly into the next question. Mm -hmm. because, and I know we've all, you've experienced this, I've experienced working in organizations and working with organizations that oftentimes when those managers in the middle or even leadership decides that they want to change something. They're working on changing the culture. They're working on changing processes. Sometimes we come upon people who we might say they're resistant to that change. How do companies overcome that challenge? How can it be done kindly with mm. respect for people? I think it's so important to shift a mindset from people being resistant to change to maybe being understanding that there's a reason behind this uh, sort of initial resistance per se, that they're having a human reaction that um, maybe they weren't involved in creating the new solution. Maybe they're afraid that they're gonna lose their job or that they don't have the capabilities or skills or that they were, you know, so. I think it's going back to that sense of humanity that we all sometimes experience that discomfort that comes when things change and shift. I actually was having this very, a very similar conversation with my 10 year old son this morning. Um, and one could say he's being resistant to change. There's a new structure for his school programming this year. And he was really upset about it because it's different than how it was last year. And we talked about how change is different and it comes with discomfort sometimes and he wasn't he didn't feel part of the decision that was made and so these are very same human experiences that people happen that happen to humans in our organizations as well and so if we can really go back to that sense of humanity and stop sort of seeing people in a negative light that they're being resistant to change but really helping um, them grow through that change help support them through that even engage them in maybe creating the new change or giving that understanding what's underlying those perceived resistance um, uh, behaviors that they're having. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. And when people ask me about this topic of uh, resistance to change, I said, well, you know, the reason people resist is because we're human beings. Resistance is actually human. We have negativity bias. We have all of those things that built into our DNA to keep us uh, safe, you know, from mm -hmm. all of those prehistoric times. And I think really, when we run into that, the kind thing to do is think back, what is our organization's purpose? Mm -hmm. Right? And remember that we have to help people through those very human feelings, which we ourselves, <laughs> you know, to a greater extent, maybe not at this point, but maybe for something else, I feel exactly those uh, same ways. I think that when an organization is tied to purpose, it's so much easier to deal with all of these different things. Yes. All right, so here's the last question from students. What books or materials would you recommend to um, help leaders define their purpose? and to help uh, organizations with this whole concept of purpose? Also, there are a lot of books, uh, but it's great because I was actually traveling with two of my favorite books, which happen to be related to uh, two people here. So the first I would say is Karen Ross's How to Coach for Creativity and Service Excellence. There are, I mean, you can even see I have, you know, uh, notes in here, really good practical workbook to help you 
and your organization think about and define purpose and then how to coach the people in your organization. And then I, I've learned so much from Mr. Yoshino, which is why I felt so honored to have written um, the book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn. Uh, I have learned so much from him about purpose and uh, about how organizations create and create alignment with purpose. And all of those stories are here in the book. And I also have a workbook that is a companion guide that you can find at kbjanderson.com. I also really, and we're you know, talking about other women as well, Karen, uh, Karen Martin's book, Clarity First, is also another great resource as well in creating clarity around purpose and process and people as well. So I would say those are my, my three top resources right now. There are so many out there, um, but we're focused on women, female authors. And uh, so go learn and focus on your purpose and your organization's purpose and how to connect that and lead with intention for whatever level uh, you are at, because we are all leaders and we are all learners. I absolutely love it. And Karen Martin is going to be uh, a guest later on in the web oh, series. Great. I know. So Fantastic. People, I didn't even know that. <laughs> we'll get to meet Karen as well. So Katie, first of all, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your insights when we started putting the web series together and you know, we were talking about how to get started. Of course, I said there's only one way to get started. <laughs> talking about purpose and intention and the best person that I could think about to talk about that with is you. So do you have any last words, um, suggestions, wisdom that you'd like to share with our audience today? Well, I, absolutely. First, I love to connect with people around the world and I would love to connect with all of you. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn um, backslash kbjanderson.com. Um, on Twitter, my handle is at kbjanderson, as well as my website as well. I have a, a newsletter and I really love to hear from people. That's what inspires me and gives me energy. Um, of course, you please read the book uh, and be inspired as much as I have from Mr. Yoshino as well. And um, I'd love to have any of you in my upcoming courses or to reach out and just connect in general. And to know, um, I, I love this concept that I learned from talking with Mr. Yoshino. It was a comment he made about his experience of, at Toyota. He called it a chain of learning. And I see that we are all connected in this chain of learning together. We, I, I learn from everyone else and through like talking this conversation, I've learned something new. Um, and I love sharing and connecting. Oh. That's so powerful as well. So thank you all, and thank you, Karen, for inviting me here today. Katie, thank you so much, Katie, always for sharing your insight, for sharing your kindness, and for, of course, being my fabulous friend. And as we say always in K2C2, the uh, coaching community that Katie and I uh, host together, one plus, one plus one is way more than two. two. <laughs> All right. Well, I will look forward to uh, chatting with you soon, Katie. And I'm going to wrap up our episode today by summarizing some of our main insights. So insight number one, focusing only on the things that just need to be created in an organization, whether you're manufacturing or services, is a mistake. The, it, don't just focus on tasks. Make sure you're asking the questions that tie us to purpose. What is the reason we're doing this? What's the problem we're so, trying to solve? What is the impact we need to make for our customers and the organization? Insight number two, what's the best way to start any journey? With purpose. And that purpose needs to be connected to customers because the only reason any organization, again, and that's manufacturing and service is in business, is to solve the problems of our customers. Insight number three, change your mindset. Leaders need to be connected to the people doing the work. Showing that you're willing to help is essential to improve the work environment and remember as leaders, since you are the connection, 
you are the connection to purpose to the work. So make sure that you are showing up and creating that connection with your team members. Insight number four, talk a lot with the team. We're humans and we can sometimes <laughs> be scared of change. Change the way you think, instead of thinking people are resistant, think people are having a normal human reaction to things being different. Help your people through it. That kindness is gonna help connect them to purpose and make sure they're connected to doing their work in the right way. Insight number five, be an outlier. Don't just focus on the tasks. Focus on the purpose of the company. And if you're not sure about that purpose, go to ask your leader. Make sure you understand why you're doing something, how it's gonna help your customers, how it's gonna help the organization, not just doing the task. It's gonna be better for your organization and it's gonna be better for you. So, well, that is the end of this very first episode of Cultura G Excellencia. So thank you for joining me and my fabulous friend, Katie Anderson. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone next week where we're gonna be talking about how to inspire more women to become involved with Lean. Until then, I hope you have an absolutely fabulous week filled with purpose, process improvement, and kindness. Ben Pessoa, ese fue o primero episodio do Cultura de Excelencia. Muito obrigado por se juntar a mim e a Katie Anderson hoje. Espero ver todos vocês na semana que vem, onde vamos falar sobre como inspirar mais mulheres a adotar o Lean com mais uma mulher incrível no Lean. Até lá, espero que você tenha uma semana fabulosa e cheia de propósito, melhoria de processos e gentileza. Tchau, tchau!